Hey guys, Zabbix 7.0 comes with a good news because the good old feature of multi-factor authentication for the Zabbix will finally be implemented. And to be honest, that's the feature and functionality that I'm going to try to explain to you um, today. It's not yet available even in the recent uh, beta 2. You must compile from the sources, uh, from the feature branch, and the feature itself is also not yet uh, completed for 100%. But what I've already found is uh, a guide on uh, how you can configure and what you need to consider uh, when you're configuring this MFA from the official partner of the Zabbix uh, in it Max. And uh, again, uh, no hesitation, I'll just uh, post the link to this in the description of the video. So if you want to follow through the blog, just uh, just click. Uh, if you want to follow through the video, then uh, as I said, uh, what we have here is the Zabbix 7.0.0 Beta 2. But uh, keep in mind, the feature is not yet merged in a master release. So this is a feature branch compilation, but probably at the moment of uh, releasing the video, it's already going to be out. And uh, to configure MFA, what you need to do is uh, basically go to the user section in the front end then authentication and from the previous versions you will find a new section a new tab here MFA settings and uh, I've already have created mine and basically we're talking about I am more used to call it OTP uh, one-time password but uh, here it is called as TOTP which uh, stands for as far as understood again from from this page is uh, time-based one-time password. So it's just a matter that eventually the provided password will uh, expire, right? That's correct, because when you're using OTP, you're just receiving it uh, as example in an email and then uh, it doesn't uh, expire, but here you will have a limited time period to actually use it. So when you're configuring it, as you can see, the configuration is straightforward. You just have to call it somehow, then choose the hash functionality, made be SHA1, which uh, probably would not recommend for the concerns of the security. So for the sake of this testing, we will choose the most secure, which is SHA512. And you can also choose the code length, like do you want to do you want to have your OTP password six characters or, or eight? We will go to default uh, six. And you can also configure the do a universal prompt um, authentication, I guess we could call it like that. But that's uh, if even if it's going to be, then it's going to be a story of a different video because you, as far as I understand right now, you need to have a separate config configuration and installation of uh, this universal prompt to which then you point the Zabbix front end and use authentication also in that tool. So we're using just time-based one-time password. Configure it like this. So when this is done, we can click update, update, that's it. Um, green authentication settings updated. And then we also have a sort of flexibility, like it's not a global setting, even if we just set it up uh, and, and it is working on our front end, it doesn't mean that all our users and user groups will have to use MFA. And we'll get to the point like how can you exactly use that uh, a bit later. <clears throat> so to continue the configuration, let's say for, for the sake of the testing, I will create a new user group. As you can see, I have just the default settings here. I'll create a user group and call it uh, MFA test. And uh, yeah, uh, here also multi-factor authentication. We need to choose obviously the MFA test, which is the name of the MFA rule, which we just added. And you can have multiple of those. So click add. There we go. We have a user group and then let's create a user. Let's call it uh, test. I will just type my super secret password and we will add it to a newly created user group MFA test um, permissions. So add a role. Let's make him an admin. It doesn't really make any difference. Uh, close this. Yeah. So now we have our test user. We have our MFA test user group, which has multi-factor authentication um, configured or set as MFA test. And MFA test is this one. But again, as I said, you can add multiple and then distribute them between multiple user groups, multiple users, and so on. So right now, to be honest, everything is uh, ready and set up. So what we can do is sign out. 
and uh, I will try to log in with my test user. And when I try to log in, as you can see, we get a new page uh, with a QR code, which is saying scan this QR code. And basically the only thing that you have to do is open your uh, authenticator app. It can be Microsoft, it can be Google Authenticator, or I guess there are some, some more of them. And as it usually goes with any other applications, you just scan uh, the app. Uh, you just scan the QR code with the app and uh, sorry, let me grab my phone. I am recording with a phone right now. Okay, and then what you do, you pick up your phone, uh, open the authenticator app, uh, where it is, there we go. And uh, whenever you will scan this QR code, the new entry will appear also with the name of your MFA that you configured in the front end. In my case, it is MFA-test. And uh, there we go, we have a six character code. And we can, no, we can not. Uh, sorry, let me do it. All oh, right, I created it from the scratch. So let me delete this and I will scan the code once again, just because I had the left entry from my previous test. So I'm scanning the code and I have an MFA test 342 and 733. And there we go. After some second, we successfully logged into our front end. And uh, yeah, so that is the straightforward how you can configure the MFA authentication is as Abex. Thank you for watching. Click like, subscribe, comment, whatever else, and uh, see you later in the next videos. Thank you and goodbye.